Thank you for listening to Persian Women in Tech's podcast, Kiwit Shiroz, created to introduce and elevate the profile of successful Iranian women in tech. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining Persian Women in Tech podcast, Pewit Shiroz. Uh, this week, we're so excited to have an incredible guest who is in the technology sphere, um, having done so many different things. Um, as you know, Pewit Shiroz is a podcast to elevate the profile of Iranian women who are successful in technology. Um, our guest today is Camelia Aryafar. Camelia John, thank you so much for joining um, our podcast today. I'm so excited about this conversation. Thank you so much, Sadhguru John. I'm so excited to be here. Wonderful. Camelia John, uh, you know, you have such an incredible background, so many different things you have done. And uh, I, I even want to say so many different uh, career ladders you have um, overcome. I think the, the glass ceiling has already been shattered by you. Uh, and so I would love to hear or our audience would like to hear, you know, how did you end up where you are today? As, and, and, you know, just looking at your background, what you're doing today, today you are the director of cloud AI at Google. Uh, Google being such an incredible company. Um, it's a large company, has presence all around the world. Um, would love to hear your history. Yeah, absolutely. I would be happy to. And thank you so much for the question. Um, honestly, I think uh, I have been incredibly fortunate uh, in my journey uh, to have so much uh, support from everyone around me, um, and that has helped a lot, frankly, to get me to where I am today. Um, but perhaps it helps kind of like to go through my background in terms of career and kind of like explaining my jumps, because I think that's something very beneficial for the audience. Um, so I have started uh, within the computer science, machine learning, uh, very much technical um, side of the, the world, and I have jumped into a management executive path. Um, and I think I have been very fortunate and I've had the support to actually do this, and I think a lot of companies nowadays support this kind of movement. Um, but I think from my side as well, kind of like taking the chance to ask for these opportunities have helped. Um, so mm -hmm. I have always been a risk taker. Um, I joined Etsy as a startup, uh, a very small startup, medium size maybe uh, at that point in 2012. And uh, I left several years after the IPO as a hands-on data scientist myself working across the stack. Um, and I became increasingly interested in leadership and management and how I can drive um, bigger impact and kind of like building teams that are very much focused on product and engineering, but also inclusion and diversity and the goal of, um, you know, like the company. Uh, and with that, I, I moved to Overstock.com to take a leadership role and, uh, you know, like introduce those concepts to the organization. And I think that has been um, very successful uh, in the sense that I got to have a lot of impact on the organization and receive a lot of support. Uh, so I kind of um, uh, went through the ladder of management and I grew to be their chief algorithms analytics officer uh, and a board member for them. And that was, that was amazing. And uh, I, I again took another chance to join uh, Google Cloud AI. Uh, it's a very interesting product. I've always been a huge fan of Google from a technical perspective and also like uh, everything they're doing, um, you know, like around the world. Um, so I think it's uh, the jumps have, have really helped me a lot. And uh, this is mm -hmm. something that I wanted to share with the community. One Great. And you just mentioned so many different companies that we all are familiar with, uh, obviously, and, um, and having had the opportunity and a chance and, and because of your background, being able to work in all of these different uh, environments and in these different companies that today are large companies, uh, certainly it has to have started somewhere where um, someone pushed you to be where you are today. Where did that push come from? You know, you, you mentioned, you know, the need to wanting to, uh, to grow and also um, be part of management and creating more impact. Was there uh, anyone or anything that 
had a great impact in your life to get you to this direction uh, in, within your career? Uh, yeah, I would say uh, from an internal perspective, frankly, I, I really enjoy building things and I really enjoy, uh, you know, like getting on ground zero and building things from the ground up. Uh, and that has been always a motivating kind of um, push for me to to change into the roles that uh, have that as part of them. So I, I kind of like to think of it that I get in at, at ground zero and start helping like build something, and when it reaches my place that's stable and the team has grown, I would like to shift uh, to you know like growing a new um, kind of like product, very much like yourselves, like uh, from an entrepreneurship perspective, Sebi the job. Um, I would say, but uh, it also like externally, I think my upbringing and um, the environment overall, um, uh, the way that you kind of like uh, behave in your family or, you know, like your school, the competitive kind of aspect of it. And the fact that we were introduced so early on to kind of, uh, you know, like start working on technology and taking it apart and assembling it, I think that has helped uh, kind of um, create that spirit within me. Great. And, you know, you just mentioned about the cultural part of things. I know in my household, it was uh, always said, become a doctor, lawyer, or Mohandas. Uh, <laughs> and so I didn't become any of those. I became the horrifying uh, the part or the path that I took being an entrepreneur, which is so um, unstable, my parents were. But for you, you did take the Mohandas uh, round. Um, is it because you have, <laughs> do you have family uh, members who are as well Mohandas or, or engineers as well? Uh, yeah, actually, I think my brother uh, has had a big influence in my life. He's an electrical engineer and now he's a professor at the University of Portland. So that has always been, uh, you know, like I, I was always paired with him. But exactly like you said, there, there has always been an emphasis within Persian parents to, you know, like you should be a doctor or a Mohandas, like you said. Uh, <laughs> so we followed that path, frankly, and uh, a lot of us did. And I think uh, that has played a huge role in the path that we take. Um, but for me, like, for example, like going into medicine versus like, uh, you know, like computer science or robotics, I, I very much dislike medicine in some sense and I really, really enjoy the robotics aspect so that one portion of it yeah we got to choose but the rest of it I think yeah the, the Iranian society and I've written an op-ed about this we, we have a very good uh, push on you know like women STEM and engineering and uh, we were really encouraged as uh, children to actually like attend those programs and start entering the engineering field. Agreed I mean um, I remember also another article that um, quoted that 70% of, and this is from 2019, 70% 70 of uh, university graduates in Iran are STEM related and they're women. So 70%, and, and that's yeah. basically anywhere else in the world, we have the opposite. It's less than 30% of uh, STEM or engineering graduates of universities are women. So certainly uh, there is an impact that starts at home, which definitely has been for all of us. Um, at least I have experienced that as well. Um, you talked about, uh, you know, your impact and uh, the impact that people have had internally, externally for you. Um, looking back, what would you tell your younger self? And you can decide what age you think you would have given uh, that person, you know, yourself at that point advice. What would that advice be that, from the experiences that you have had today? Yeah, I love that question. I thought about it a fair amount. I think I would go back to when I was maybe like 17 or 15, like when the phase that we all go through that we become super obsessed with what other people think. Mm -hmm. And I would try to tell myself, you know, like uh, just focus on your own internal voice and try to follow what you think is correct and what you want to do as opposed to kind of like changing yourself or everybody else. Um, I think I went through this phase of kind of, uh, you know, like trying to be somebody I didn't want to be. And I think it's important. And girls go through that phase, I think, a lot more. Um, yeah. This is unscientific, but it's just my hunch. And I think it's, it, it really plays a role in your self-esteem and when you grow up and uh, how you present yourself. And I think I would, I would definitely want to have that conversation with myself. 
<laughs> yeah. And I think it's also, uh, it, it might or might not be in your case, but uh, the additional pressure, it's not just a family pressure you have, you have the external pressure, you have the community pressure, the school pressure. And then on top of it, if you're an immigrant, you have the immigrant pressure as well uh, to, to succeed and, and help other maybe family members who are also immigrated and what are they doing and, and so forth. So there is a lot of different pressures that we have through our life. So taking it easy is definitely a, a, a good advice, especially at that age. I think we, we are, we are def, I mean, yeah. in hindsight, everyone would love to give themselves that advice as well. And maybe we're translating that now with the next generation um, as we are uh, either mothers or we have nephews and nieces and, and so forth. We can give that wisdom to them all. Oh, these will, this shall pass. Don't worry about it too much. These are not significant things to, to think about. There's amazing new things or other things that may be much more important, like studying already for yeah. your engineering degree. What can you do today to succeed in that? Um, would be definitely something that would be worth worrying about. Um, you know, yeah. everyone talks about their successes and everyone talks about uh, you know, where they are today. One thing we neglect to talk about, and I call it warrior scars, is our challenges <laughs> that we have in our life and we have to overcome them and, and those situations. And, um, you know, everyone has a different career path they take. Um, and with that uh, set or with those uh, experiences come hand in hand and things that we encounter. What are your what was your most challenging moment in your life and how did you overcome that? Yeah, I, I would say for me, um, from a personal perspective, and perhaps it, it impacts career too, uh, was the moment I decided to come to the U.S. Uh, and start my life here. Uh, I, I, was, um, I, I came to the country a lot later, uh, so around like when I was 22 after my undergraduate. Mm -hmm. And by that time, you know, like you established a, a group of friends and you have ties and you have some leads up what you want to do in the society and you know, your family is there. And just leaving that behind and, you know, like accepting that well, I'm going to go alone to another country and, you know, like just start fresh there. I think that was very, very scary for me and extremely challenging. So I remember I took the plane. Uh, it's actually quite funny. And um, I was with Drexel University's basketball team, women's basketball team, <laughs> on my flight from, <laughs> from London to Philadelphia. And I was going to grad school and I had no idea whatsoever, like, uh, you know, like what, what uh, Americans are outside of the country. I've seen them like, you know, like here and there in, uh, in, in trips, but I, I never... Uh, Ha was exposed that much say to Philadelphia and just just seeing the basketball team honestly I didn't recognize that first but they're the basketball team and I was thinking to myself well I, I would be really short in this country and how am I gonna how am I gonna tackle that and you know <laughs> how, what will be the challenges and I don't have any friends and how am I going to become friends with these people and all of those things I think it's extremely challenging and uh, a very defining uh, kind of like path for a lot of us who have uh, you know, like migrated. Um, so that's, that's a huge uh, you know, like part of what defines me, I think, today um, has been going through that challenge. Um, but then there, there are several other like battle scars after that I, I have. And I really like talking about failure, frankly. Uh, I actually do celebrate failures within my team mm -hmm. as part of my leadership principle. Um, because I believe talking about failure is important um, yeah. as opposed to just focusing on the successes. Um, so I always say the stories of, you know, like how I, I almost didn't, didn't want to finish my PhD program because I was going through so many personal things and, you know, I was just tired and um, I took a break and I went to Etsy and I came back and I defended my PhD um, and we didn't Etsy too. I always joke about this with my colleagues from Etsy that I've, broken at the, you know, like the website in production so many times. And uh, it's important to talk about this stuff and normalize the concept of mm -hmm. failure. Um, and I've had them, frankly, like every, every single step of the way. Um, so a lot of battle scars would be happy to talk to you more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. And I think, that, uh, again, going back to 
you know, how women are such perfectionists. They want everything to be so perfect. And it does affect us differently when we have these challenges or when we have failures uh, to be able to um, push forward and not be disappointed or not. I, I think disappointment maybe is just natural, but at least not discouraging ourselves when we're going through these different challenges that uh, we will overcome them, we will get through them. Um, and tomorrow, you know, have, uh, because of that experience, knowledge at the end of the day. So you broke uh, Pinterest's website down or, or something, but that was an experience for you to know, you know, the impact that one code line of code could have had on um, on a company, basically. And, and these are valuable lessons that we learn. Um, and I think it's really important, as you said, to acknowledge that it's okay to fail. And, and culturally, I know I, I bring this up a lot, but, uh, you know, culturally, it's also looked at bad when you are not succeeding, when you're failing. We forget that failures give us wisdom, uh, as long as we don't do the yeah, same thing yeah. twice. So I hope you didn't yeah, um, yeah. it didn't shut down Pinterest twice. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I agree with you hundred percent. I think I, I think we should we should make a concrete effort of normalizing this, especially yeah. within our cultures. Um, yeah, especially like um, you know, like when you're going through like uh, so many things in life, it's easy to like focus on success and want to talk about that, but it's important to talk about failures. But no, I have broken things many times. It takes me a while to learn. I'm a quick, I'm not a quick learner. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's good. And, and I'm, I'm really appreciative that you are mentioning that, you know, for a lot of these girls and women and ladies out there to hear that it's okay. All of us go through this and we can become as successful as Camellia as well, as she's directing right now, clouded AI at Google. So, um, failure is good. Um, one thing we uh, also don't talk about a lot is about our health and wellness. How does our day look like? How do we wake up? What do we do? What is important besides work, especially right now with COVID? You're at home. <laughs> 24 seven. Yeah. Uh, so, so my question to you is what does your morning routine or day routine look like? But I'm also curious to see how you are overcoming this silo way of living that we currently have. Obviously your, your routine is completely different than what it used to look like. I'm assuming. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, tell us what usually, or what was the normal norm and what is the, now n normal for you for your day <laughs> yeah i was gonna say we should really break it down to pre-covid and post-covid because it's completely different <laughs> yes absolutely <laughs> yeah but but for me frankly i think uh, i one of the things that i do consistently pre and post uh covid is i actually do get up in the morning and get ready uh essentially like the same way that i'm supposed to go to work and I, I didn't used to do this like the first like couple of weeks of the COVID situation. And I, I didn't feel well in that two weeks, honestly, Seppi the jump. I, I just couldn't bring myself to, you know, like focus. I felt groggy the whole day. Um, but I think like kind of continuing with the routine and establishing that, well, now I'm going to work. So I'm going to get ready. You know, like if you do your hair, if you put on your makeup or you wear specific type of clothes. I think those things uh, for them to be consistent in there actually helps them be more productive and be automatically in like a work mode, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, so that has helped a lot. Um, I have tried to actually like take advantage of the COVID situation and I'm fully aware that I'm one of the lucky people, um, you know, that have the ability to do this. Um, but I usually really sleep late and, uh, you know, like wake up late and I've tried to shift that to be a morning person and my experiment is going very successfully. Um, I don't know, maybe it's just working from home uh, is, is making it a little bit easier, but I found that I have more time uh, to actually like go running or, you know, like do exercise at night, um, which I think I didn't have before because I was constantly like in traffic or, you know, like driving to work and back from work. Um, so the routine has really helped uh, for me, both in the morning and in the afternoon, kind of like post-work, take some time for yourself, you know, like exercise, take a bath, like however 
uh, you you cool down and you relax from the day. I think that's extremely important. That's great. I'm, I'm glad that you say that. Uh, for me, actually, COVID has forced me to work out. I've been saying that I'm going to start on Monday. My husband tells me, oh, Monday, you're going to start working out? I'm like, yeah, Monday. This is the day. <laughs> Uh, but since COVID, <laughs> since COVID, I, I actually was at home. I couldn't go to the gym or anything. So it was forced like, okay, uh, there's new opportunities with, you know, YouTube and all these different platforms. Now uh, you can work out with people and, and so forth. And that actually helped me start my workout routine. So I actually have to thank COVID for that. There is a positive side to everything. So um, definitely the working out has uh, stepped up since this has happened. I'm glad to hear that you have yeah. a routine. I think that's really good. Um, having a routine just consistently um, brings you to do it because it's something that you, you're reminded every day to do so. Um, well, there is always um, things that we believe or we do that others don't agree with um you know um everyone has certain beliefs or certain focus um around and so what is your uh, what is it something that you believe in that you think or have been told other people don't agree with that people disagree with uh so many things <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad to hear that <laughs> <laughs> i i have very heated discussions with my friends like about uh different topics and i think the one uh, the, the one that i want to bring up is um i think i think like giving second chances to other people uh, mm -hmm. my friends constantly tell me that i'm too optimistic or you know um i believe too much and you know like second chances and i don't learn the lesson uh, but I, I, I truly believe in people changing and giving them a second chance. I think, I think the, the way that we view each other is kind of like a static, uh, you know, like rigid view. And I think everybody, as they grow and evolve, um, that they change. And it's important not to just focus on that snapshot of the decision they made with the information they had at that time, right? So, mm -hmm. so I, I really try to be lenient. And this is something that I found from a leadership perspective. Uh, it's also helpful when you're building a team and you're trying to like bond with your team and you know, like set other, your your managers to be leaders and um, do all of those. It's really important to believe in that and believe in like you know the inherent goodness in people and um, you know like second chances and considering them a spectrum of different attributes as opposed to like very rigid um, views of people. I love what you said. I think that's really true, um, and especially the part you mentioned about second chances because that person at that time might not have had all the information when they made the decision. And that's really true. We always yeah. forget that there's two perspectives. There is not a general perspective. It's just two perspectives. So um, for them not having all the information, whatever decision at that time they made that upsets you might be just because they didn't know everything. Um, so that's very, yeah. very, very, that's uh, wisdom spoken by Camilla. <laughs> I, I love this. Yes. <laughs> Giving second. And, and we are I love hard. talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard, yes. you know. Um, we, we all make mistakes. And so giving people chances, even third chance, um, at some point we hope that um, people learn. Uh, and I love that. That's a very beautiful side of you, Camilla. Don't change, Camilla. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Yes, I have also heated conversation about these type of things, but um, it's really important. I think especially at work or in a professional environment, we should certainly be considered. Um, let's see. Um, you know, uh, throughout, uh, you just mentioned something that people disagree with you, but also um, would love to see if you could do anything that you could uh, or want, and there would be no failure. You could have it all, like the financial aspect, anything that you would want. Um, what would that be? Would you still be doing the same yeah. thing you're doing today, or would you do something else, or would you do additionally something else? Well, if, if you mean kind of like granting a wish of something that I could work yes. on and it's bound to anything. succeed. Um, Lim no limitation. Yeah, that I have a great answer. 
<laughs> then I would want to, I, I would want to, you know, like find out the, the vaccine for COVID. I think if it's bound to succeed, <laughs> I'm the only yes. person who's going to do it. Well, perfect for <laughs> the current time. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that that would be great. Or medical kind of like research. Um, I I have lost um, people, you know, like things like cancer, and um, I actually like the the research side of uh, medicine, and I, I would definitely focus on that. Uh, aside from that, I think I'm pretty content. Um, so I would continue doing whatever else I was doing. Sounds like impact is what you want to do, which you're doing currently in your work, but you also want to do it with other things like the medical yeah. um, part, which is very important in our life. So um, knowledge, you talked about, uh, you know, medical research and whatnot. Do you read books? If you do read books, um, which books have impacted your life and which one do you recommend yeah. for others to read? Frankly, I wish I was reading more. Uh, I think nowadays it's just so, you know, like difficult to focus on books just because of, you know, like other things that you can do with social media and like Netflix. And <laughs> But I have uh, in the past like few years, I've read two books that have really impacted me in, in my leadership style and what I do. And one of them is a great book, Dare to Lead uh, by Brain Brown. Um, I love her. She's, she's an amazing speaker. Um, really great book on kind of, um, you know, like leadership. And um, it really lays a roadmap for anybody who wants to lead uh, mindfully and live, you know, like a full, brave life. Uh, and I think mm -hmm. it's, it's a must read. Uh, I really like that book. Um, and the second one is Turn the Ship Around, and that's by David Markey. And um, uh, it's just an amazing book. Um, by this Captain Markey and uh, about like empowering uh, leadership and uh, how you can do to kind of like uh, turn your followers truly into leaders. And I think that's really something that I really care about, uh, both from a professional and from a personal perspective. So I do highly recommend those too. Great. And that shows also, as you mentioned, these books are really great, especially if you want to become a leader. Um, and everybody at any stage in their life can become a leader. You don't have to have the title um, to be mm -hmm. a leader and having information is going to get you there. Um, what do you want yeah. to leave on this planet when you leave? <sighs> yeah, I, uh, I want my legacy, <laughs> if you will, to be kind of like bringing people together, I would say, like bringing harmony in general, I think overall, uh, this is true like historically, but even more now, we focus a lot on what divides us and how we're different and we believe in different things, but we kind of like discard the 99.999% uh, of what we have in common. Um, and I, I really like to build on that and kind of like try to come up with like, like, like more, more worldviews that, you know, like unite everybody as opposed to like uh, dividing them. And you can apply this in everything, like uh, your family, your friendship, your, you know, like your partnership uh, with your significant other or, you know, like at work. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I've been really interested in how I can do this better and how I can, you know, like uh, get everybody else to kind of like see the world in this way. That's so beautiful. Um, well, thank we are you. at time. I wanted to thank you, Camelia, for giving us your time today. It's invaluable. I mean, I cannot even, uh, you know, thank you enough for all the information and the insight that you have brought to our podcast today. And I'm sure our audience and our listeners will appreciate all the information. Um, do you have anything else you want to share with our audience? Any type of thought or any message or advice? Um, yeah, just keep going. Uh, women are awesome. And I look forward to having more women in the tech field. And yeah, stay strong, stay positive. Um, situations are going through is temporary. Hopefully everything is going to get resolved pretty soon. Um, and yeah, I, I just want to hear more from the community too. I look forward to your other interviews. It's always such a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, thank you so much, Camilla. And how can, if uh, people wanted to get in touch with you, how can they get in touch with you? What's the best way? 
Uh, yeah, I have. Uh, I'm on Twitter and LinkedIn, and I have my own website too. It's kariafar.com that has kind of like a message box at the end that will email me. Um, so I would I would actually love to connect with anybody if they have questions, you know, like with regards to leadership or. Um, especially in this time, I've actually been offering like uh, resume reviews or you know, like those kind of things for the community. So I'd be happy to connect with everyone. This is great. Thank you so much, Camilla John, for your time today. Again, we look forward to seeing you in many, many different um, areas and places. And hopefully our community will be connecting with you soon to get more mentorship from you and uh, see how they can get to the career level that you have gotten throughout the years. Um, thank you so much um, from the audience. Thank you for listening. We're looking forward to sharing more insights with you um, and tune in again uh, soon for our next special guest. Have a good day. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us this week on Pivot's Heroes. Make sure to visit our website, PersianWomenInTech.com, where you can subscribe to our podcast on YouTube and SoundCloud so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a rating on our podcast platforms and share the podcast link with friends and help us elevate Iranian women in tech and inspire our community.